We respectfully request the Sangha of great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Kung thin dai duk tang thin vi thu pha voi khap nhat thi kết chung san xin chiến diệu pha lung nhau đau ngã mùng như há liêu san thoa tư ly khô đà hạc là tất chứng vô san Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Suche Do Ye Alahudi San Miao San Puto Sye. Namo Tak Tak Ta To Ya Da Ya Alahade Tam Miao Tam Bo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I am able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom that thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang 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 wei miao fa ba hi chien wan jie nan zao yi wo ho jin jie wen te shou chi O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shen Hua, O good monks and nuns, and all good known advisors, Ami Tofo. Chu Fu Fu Sa, Ching Liang Ta Shi, Shi Fu Shang Ren, Go Wei, Chu Cha Ren, Go Wei, Shang Chu Shi, Ami Tofo. Chư Phật Bồ Tát kính thưa thanh lương đại sư hòa thượng kinh hóa quý thầy cô và quý vị thiện sư thức ca nhị đạo Phật. Hello everyone. Today is the third of December 2023. We here at Wei Mountain Temple to continue discussing the first chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra. We on slide 383. Thank you all for coming. We in the midst of a Chan Chi here. First week, of the, uh, the second week of the Chan Chi, actually. And so feel free to ask any questions. This is the time for you to ask questions, uh, uh, any kind of questions. Yes, JMT. Hesun Sonseng Nim Chilmun Imida. Mue Si Eso, Tarun Sarame, Turio Murtua Jumion, Chasine, Turio Mi Sarajinda, Ragua Shandunde. 이미 자신이 두려운데 어떻게 상대의 두려움을 도와줄 수 있는지요? Master, about giving paramitas, uh, there is uh, giving non-fearlessness to others. So what if I already have a full of fear? How can I give fearlessness to others? When you give fearlessness to others, you don't look at your own fears. You look at others' fears and try to alleviate their fears. Okay? So in doing so, you are helping them. You also are helping yourself become less fearful as well. As a consequence, even though you're fearful inside, but you try your best to help a relief the fears and trepidations of others, 
will help you reduce your own fears. Anyone else? Yes, five. Thank you, Master. Um, I just want to uh, express my appreciation, uh, especially for the last few nights of, uh, of your Dharma talks. They've been really, really profound, and I found uh, the content uh, super helpful um, to, sh to share uh, something I experienced yesterday during the Dharma talk. I, I feel like I identified a blind spot for myself, and I wanted to ask, um, while we're talking about false thoughts and attachments, um, it occurred to me that expectations are an attachment that I've held. And I haven't heard that I can think of expectations be defined as an attachment. So is, it, is that correct? Expectations are an attachment? Yes, absolutely. Expectations are attachments. Uh, they uh, influence uh, your, your thinking. And therefore, because of your expectations, uh, you will uh, have a certain reaction. You use certain, certainly for you, you tend to judge others. That's your biggest, one of your bigger weaknesses is that you are very judgmental. And, and you should recognize it. And you, you actually, for you personally, you justify it by, by, uh, by hiding behind something called expectations. Expect expectations of ability, expectations of proper manners, expectations of observing the rules of traffic and so forth, okay? And those are, are basically uh, your, your, uh, your uh, being judgmental. And you only use those as, as uh, excuses for you to judge others. It's not about being right. Being right is for losers. Let me repeat for you. You cultivate, you become enlightened, and you think you're right, and you, you, you reserve the right to judge others, you're a loser in my book. Okay, meaning that you don't deserve to be taught. Okay, because the more I teach you, the more you judge others. Because what's the point? Okay, the more, the more you practice, the more you make progress, the more humble you should become and stop judging others, embrace and accept others who they are. Okay? Uh, I hope you, your generation won't make the same mistakes as my generation. We think we learn from the greatest teacher, therefore we're special. We're not. It's just anyone else trying our best. Okay? Anyone else? Okay, 383. Yes, sir. No? Questions? Yes, four. Hey, oh, thank you, Mr. Master. The mantra is to do mantra and the mantra is to do the mantra and the mantra is to do the mantra and the mantra is to 단지 염주를 돌리면서 하는 게 숫자를 세는 거에 끝인 건지 그런 게 궁금합니다. Thank you so much, Master. I have a question between using beads uh, or not using beads uh, while I was reciting mantras. Is using beads actually only for the counting or is there any other reason? Uh, what's the difference? Thank you. Okay. When you do a lot of recitation, especially when you have a quota, for example, uh, some of you might want to recite uh, the Great Compassion Mantra 
108 times. The beats are uh, 108 of them. So you might want to use those beats to keep track of your recitation. It's easier. Okay? And so primarily they are, the beats are designed to help you keep track of your recitation. Uh, and, uh, but but uh, for, uh, it also has uh, other uses, such as a reminder for you to recite. Uh, the Buddha's name, for example, when you recite the Buddha's name, a lot of people like to use beats. They go like this, as an amitofo, 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 and so forth. Mm. And so this is the, the move one beat as, uh, as they recite the, uh, the Buddha's name once, every time they move it. So pretty soon as you do that, pretty soon, uh, pretty soon you associate reciting Buddha's name with, with this physical movement here. So that's reciting without thinking anymore. Until then, you usually recite because you think I'm thinking of Buddha's name. Okay? And I like to use the beats to not think of the Buddha's name anymore. So, so actually, this is a natural recitation for me. I don't think anymore. Mitofo, mitofo, mitofo. So I don't think anymore. Okay? It becomes automatic. Okay, so I find that to be useful. Well, there's a drawback that is uh, you draw attention to others, uh, to the fact you're reciting. So there's always drawbacks. So you, there's always pros and cons. So use your discretion, use your judgment. Use it when appropriate, don't use it when it's not appropriate. Okay? The Dharma is flexible. You don't want to uh, be inflexible. I use beats often because I recite a lot, and then at times I'm with people and I use my 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 uh, what do you call this? One, two, three. Finger, uh, whatever. Not the digits, but the the. Uh, not knuckle. Knuckle is this. And you use to hit people. What do you call this? One, two, three. What is with you? Is this America or? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know Vietnamese, but I don't know the English word. Yes, yes, sir. Five. Uh -huh. Thank you, Master. Sorry not to be too judgmental, but I've literally never seen anybody count that way. So I don't know what to call See, that's it. why no one notices <laughs> my account. And in mixed companies, for example, in a meeting, if I would whip out a beat, I sound like, oh, the Master is, is reciting. No, but when, you, when you, you recite this quietly, you can do recite like this, no one knows. But you don't touch each fingertip? Oh, I do. I go, I go like this. That's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you've got twelve options to count. Fourteen. Across your four fingers. And fifteen. Then I have twelve left for twenty-seven, which is a fourth of a round. Thank you for teaching me that. I which is uh, which is also for us uh, when we do ceremonies and we need to get uh, yeah, yeah, lead you around to do the to recite mantras and we don't have beats then we use our fingers to do it to keep track. That's what uh, I learned from from Master Shinhua's uh, monks. I saw a monk do that. Ah, it makes sense. Okay, and so. Uh, yes, you're right. There, the reason I explain a lot, things are a lot more details for you, more than the Chinese style, is because the Chinese style, they don't have it anymore. We leave it at the same level of details that the Dharma is, is explained in Chinese. The, uh, the new, your generation will struggle mightily to understand it.
only a handful of people who understand it. And, it's, and it's understandable because the Chinese and Asian they have, don't have a problem with birth rate historically. And therefore, it's okay if uh, they reserve of the, the elite practitioners. I'm, I'm, I believe that everyone should have a fair chance and you, I don't explain it to you. Am I supposed to assume that your generation will get it? I doubt it. So that's the one reason why I give you more details than normal, but not to the point of giving the farm away. There's a lot more details I'm not telling you. Okay, you need to do it, then you know, okay? Then you ask the right questions. So, yes, I'm trying to speed it up for you. If I, if you, I didn't tell you, it would probably take you, I, by telling you, I save you about, depending on who you are, uh, years, decades, lifetimes, depending on who you are. Um, and again, my goal is try to speed it up for you so that we catch up with the Asians. Okay, the Asians are way ahead of us. They have thousands of years of the Dharma and we are, we are playing catch up. And so therefore we need to have better AI. Okay. All right, anyone else? Besides, I'm old, I won't have much time left. It's my dream to go to the Bahamas. <laughs> All right, yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Hmm. We are on slide 383. Uh, celestial king phrases the sublime sounds. Gain a passage into liberation of advancing his own practice by recollecting the thus come one's vast kindness. Okay. This celestial king here, we're talking about the big shots who rule over the desire heavens in our desire realm, which is the highest heaven where the heavenly demons reside. Okay, and this is the king, king of the heavenly demons. They're very, very powerful. I mean, their spiritual powers rival that of bodhisattvas. Okay. They are extremely, extremely dangerous. Okay, but it turns out many of them are actually Mahasattvas. Okay, and so this celestial king is known amongst the Mahasattvas as phrases of sublime sounds. What does it mean? The name it tells you that uh, when he speaks Dharma, when he speaks, uh, he is very, very eloquent to the level of being sublime. Okay, uh, that's very important uh, because, uh, because if you have wisdom, you need to relate it, convey it to others. And therefore, you must have the skills to express yourself. Hmm? He must have eloquence. But he, this, this celestial king here, uh, brings eloquence to the next level. It's sublime eloquence. You see, standards are very, very high, folks. All right, I need to impress upon you that everything in this Avatamsaka world here is really top notch stuff. Otherwise, they don't, they don't, the names don't get to be mentioned here. Okay, so his sound is so sublime. So even when he talks Dharma in particular, it's like it's, a, sub, the sound is so alluring, so fantastic, so, um, I don't know, so you get so, so uh, enthused about cultivation, about the Dharma, and you find how beautiful the Dharma is. Okay, that's him. He's known for that. Okay, why is it important? 
because sometimes it's not your forte. So if you want to, uh, to convince someone, you might want to invite him along and have him speak to that person. Okay? And we have a team. Uh, Dharma propagation is a team. Each one of us has a specialty. Okay? So this guy's specialty is speaking Dharma in a very sublime way. The sound is so beautiful. Hmm? Hmm. And so, so, so after he became enlightened, he goes about his business by providing, by, by speaking Dharma using phrases of sublime sounds. Okay? Uh, you know, like some of the politicians, hmm, I notice myself, for example, some of the politicians or senators or congressmen, they can express themselves very well, better than us. Agree or disagree? You watch the news clips and say, wow, like, what's his name? Secretary of Transportation, Beauty Geek. You listen to him about five words, you say, wow, this guy really can enunciate, and it's so fluid, it so flows so beautifully. You know, that you want to listen to what he has to say. I really like listening to him. I don't know why he's talking about, but it's all, it's all like a pre, uh, pre uh, fabricated, pre, it's nothing natural with this guy, okay? But, but the way he phrased it is so beautiful, so pleasant to the ears. Please try it out. I'm, I'm impressed by him. Versus, for example, President Biden. Do you want to listen to him? No, you fall asleep. I fall asleep. As soon as Mr. Biden speaks, I switch channels. <laughs> okay? And so, so that's very important part of if you want to help others, okay? Uh, uh, so this is what you need to consider down the road. He's got there because he prepared himself. Buddha Jeek, for example, I hope I'm not butchering his name too badly. He prepared himself because he's gay, okay, and he's a minority, and therefore he needs to distinguish himself and prepare himself to make a name for himself and make a you know a fight for the, their causes. So, so this is see you you need this happened because he. This celestial king here decided to, on, on, his, uh, on his cultivation path that he will speak Dharma using phrases of sublime sounds. Is that clear? It doesn't happen haphazardly. You must, ha you must uh, uh, have an interest in developing this skill. Okay? And that's what they do. Mm. Uh, and how did he become, uh, become uh, enlightened? Mm -hmm. uh, by recollecting the dust come one's vast kindness. So what he does is he, he, re, he always mindful, remember, recollects all the Buddhas. Okay? Hmm. Not all the Buddhas, sorry. So only recollecting one Buddha. Not all the Buddhas. So what he did is to whoever uh, he was learned the Dharma, practicing the Dharma under, which Buddha he was, he collected that particular Buddha's vast kindness. That's how he became enlightened. You know, interesting. He didn't do, he didn't do Chan at all. 
he didn't fast at all. Many of you are fasting and you look so miserable. <laughs> okay. He, at his level of practice, so what you're doing, you paving the way for you to get to this level, okay? So I want you to have an open mind and say, okay, I'm learning all this because these are building blocks for me, okay? But when I get higher, this is what these beings did to become enlightened, to reach their full potential. Is that clear? Okay, and so he recollects that thus come one's vast kindness. Why? What is kindness? Kindness is to give joy to others. The only purpose, doesn't matter who it is, you be kind to someone you're trying to bring joy to that person's, into that person's life. And when the Buddha is kind, vast kindness, what is he referring to? Yes, Diego. Uh, maybe because he's giving the joy of the Dharma. Joy of the Dharma, okay. Uh, vast kindness of the Buddhas is that he's giving joy to people's lives. Not necessarily Dharma, you don't necessarily have to speak the Dharma, but you give joy by a smile, by offering some chocolate, huh? by, I don't know, whatever you do, out of your kindness, that's what you do. When you're kind to others, you make others happy. It's that simple. Hmm? You, know, you give your kind, but you give your kind the kindness in your heart. All right, and that's what Buddhas do. But Buddhas do, Buddhas do it with using the vast kindness. Why vast kindness? Because. When you're kind, you tend to be kind selectively, don't you? Hmm? You say, okay, and number one, I'm only kind to my family members, to my relatives, to my friends, but certainly not to strangers. I don't know you. Why should I be kind to you? You could be a serial killer. Hmm? And so, so we selective. We selectively are kind. This is our nature because we discriminate. Yeah? And so I, I'm, you know, I, I prefer to be kind to these people here. But when the newcomers, I don't know. I need to observe them for a while before I approach, before I make up my mind about these people my expectations, okay? So that I can formulate my expectations of these people. After a while, you give up on the Catholics, trying to help the Catholics, okay? So you don't have to be kind to them anymore. <laughs> yes, five. You work on the suffering inside yourself, so then you can, um, you can bring the kind, uh, be more compassionate to whoever you come in contact with. I'm glad you brought it up. When you're kind to others, okay, it helps you forget about the suffering inside of you, doesn't it? Because you're busy. You're not going to worry about the pain in your legs or how hungry you are and how it really sucks to fast. <laughs> Why am I doing this? You know, it's, that thought is constant in your head when you fast. I don't know about you. I fasted and I didn't like it. <laughs> okay? I was whining and complaining all day. Okay? Why am I doing this again? <laughs> okay? and, so, and so when you're giving kindness here, what, he's, what the Buddha 
teaches and what this celestial king does is that they forget about themselves. They no longer, they are no longer the center of the universe. They don't focus on themselves anymore, but they focus on us. They're, sub, they're, they're the target audience, okay? And they're kind to a vast audience. Okay? Yes, sir, nine. This is a question from my mom, and she has been asking me last couple of days, okay. based on to the same point you're making. She was saying, if we do social services, that can also take us to the same place that we are trying to do through meditation. I had a difference of opinion with her, but I said, I'll ask you to comment on that. Social services? Yes, like kind of helping the poor people. Or helping the poor, doing charity work. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, building a bridge. Uh -huh. Yes. Build hospitals, schools, and Orphanage, so forth. Yes, yeah. You cannot, we cannot get where we are, where, where are we going. Is, Is that it the same like doing meditation as well? Right. Uh, it's different because when uh, there's a different, different uh, uh, pursuits, uh, first of all, you do charity work like that. You help feed the poor, help the elderly and the, uh, the solitaries and, and the people who are sick uh, and so forth, who are hungry and so forth. That's considered to be philanthropy, to be charity work. That's very important, okay? Because it nurtures the goodness in your heart, okay? But... Uh, it's not the same as meditation, because meditation is a training of your mind. It's actually a, uh, a uh, systematic way of training. Chan is a systematic way of training using a vast amount of methodologies. Sitting, walking, uh, fasting, ceremonies, mantras. You name it. So the Chan, the meditation that we, we teach, we practice, is, is, has a vast approaches. Okay? Uh, and, and so it's not the same at all. Uh, one helps the other. For example, uh, you have to start with somewhere. You have to start with doing charity work, helping others, and that will help you accrue blessings. Then you move on. That, that blessing you have there will enable you to be exposed to Chan. That's my path. Because I was, I never, I was raised in, a, in my environment, even though it's a Vietnamese, Asian, and so forth. I was brought to the temple and to bow to the Buddha, but you know, I, look at it, I looked at it as superstition. Okay, so when, you, when I did it, in the back of my mind, this is nonsense. So that negates <laughs> all the goodnesses. Okay, but I started doing charity work. Okay, and I contributed. Okay, and made a difference. And that's how I created blessings to be able to encounter the Dharma. It turns out that when I wanted to meditate, I went to a Hinayana monk. I was not allowed to meet him. So I encountered Master Shiva's Dharma by default, not because I look for him. So it's the nature of the blessings who will bring you there. Okay? And once you get into the Chan thing, then you, you're, you, you, you require prior blessings, and then you're building new blessings to enable you to progress up the ladder. That's the journey. It's not, it's not the same. Okay? So the giving, so once you, so you have to understand the worldly charity things are important, okay? but it only helps you well, up to a certain level. But for you to go a lot further, you need to produce transcendental blessings, not worldly blessings anymore. 
okay? Because the charity of works is basically worldly blessings. Okay? Uh, if you have worldly blessings, you'll be able to encounter Chan, which give you worldly benefits such as health, stamina, okay? Clarity of, of mind and so forth. That's still in the realm of worldly blessings. But as you make progress, you will then graduate into spiritual blessings. There virtually have a lot of people who come to the temple who are only interested in worldly blessings. They want to only experience bliss. They want you to just, they simply sit with us, and then as soon as the city is over, they stand up and they leave. That's all they want. Okay? So that's in the realm of worldly blessings or very limited Hinayana blessings. But we don't force it down people's throat. If they wish to do that, they're well, welcome to do that. Okay. So they're not the same. Okay, so, uh, and that's what I want to point out to you is that it's a natural progression. And the trick here is not to reject it. Okay? Uh, keep an open mind. And so the, for this, this, comes, this come one's vast kindness here is that his kind, see, this is how you become vast. You're kind to your family. You're kind to your neighbors. You're kind to your relatives. You're kind to your community. And you expand, you see? And that's, you keep on increasing, increasing, expanding the range of your kindness. That's how it becomes vast, because there's no more boundaries. You keep on expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding. That's called vastness. So Buddha's kindness, also like us, they, he starts by building the kindness incrementally. Okay? And this is critical for your wisdom. Wisdom increases. Okay? Uh, accordingly, as you expand your heart, your mind. And that's why I frown when I hear the Sunim say, I'm a Korean uh, Buddhist. Okay, I'm here to serve Koreans, I said. Then your kindness is only Korean kindness. It's not vast kindness of the Buddhas. Your samadhi is Korean samadhi, not Mahayana samadhi. Okay, so this is very important. So he recollects the Buddha's vast kindness. He says, I want to be kind, but Buddha's kindness is vast. Mine is not vast yet. So how do I, what do I need to do to increase it, my kindness, so that it becomes vast as well? That's the logic behind it. Isn't yeah, it beautiful? It's so simple. You don't have to look very far. Look at your heart. Hmm? Look at your kindness. Be kinder to more and more and more and more. Don't stop. Does it help? Hmm? Because you always stop yourself. You know, I'm Korean. You know, I'm a woman. I want to hear because I want to say woman. You should say man too. <laughs> okay? Uh, all right. Next, 385. Celestial King, banner of splendid light, gain a passage into liberation of subjugating all banners of arrogance and manifesting great compassion. Okay, um, 386. Commentary slide. Okay, so his, uh, 
he, he has uh, emitted this bright light. I had it looks, uh, very, looks very nice looking and it has a shape of a banner. So that's his trademark, okay? When you see, you see, this, see him coming, you see this banner of light. That's uh, very, very attractive, okay? Uh, so no plastic surgery needed, no, you know, it's just the light. He's, he's adorned, he's so adorned, okay? Yeah. All right? Uh, and so that's what he does. After he became enlightened, he's now he emits light, and it's very beautiful light, okay? That has, looks like a banner. Okay, and what does he do? How did he become enlightened? Okay, he become enlightened by manifesting great compassion. Okay, so his dharma door is great compassion. What's great compassion? Great compassion is starts first with looking at others' suffering, not your own. Again, you see how, how interesting it is. At their levels, they don't look at themselves anymore. They only are preoccupied with others. Like Master Shin Hua, that's why he's a Mahasattva. He's preoccupied with others, taking care of this, taking care of that, and this and this, that person, never by himself. This guy's the same thing. Great compassion is that he looks at each and everyone's suffering. And say, wow, that's a lot of suffering you're going through. He can sense your suffering. Okay? Yeah. Is that clear? So, so, so when he sees suffering, he manifests great compassion. He finds ways to relieve your suffering. Because just like you, uh, when you suffer, you don't like it. Hmm? You say, can I eat something? Are you hungry, by the way, uh, girls? Huh? Would you like to eat something? <laughs> drink something? Huh? The first nine days, not a whole lot to drink. Very thirsty. Huh? How about a little bit more water than you're allowed to drink? <laughs> so one of the hardest things the first nine days of our fasting style is so little water. Well, towards the fifth day or so, you're so dried up. Huh? You're so thirsty. Anyway, so that's why I would come and say, would you like some water? Huh? <laughs> you must be suffering so much. Let me give you some water. Okay. That's not helping. That's not great. Being compassionate, is it? <laughs> well, anyway, so when he sees people suffering, okay, great compassion, he does not discriminate at all. If you're suffering, he says, oh, I feel for you. Okay? Uh, and why does he manifest great compassion? Okay? Uh, by choosing to subjugate, to subdue, okay? Uh, to destroy and eradicate all sorts of arrogance, banners. What does it mean? It means that these beings are so arrogant. And why they call arrogance banners? Because they're the worst of the arrogant people. It's just that it's arrogant people say, like, you arrogant, say, I'm better than, than her. That's arrogance, okay? Mm. 
am better than him. That's arrogance. Women are better than men. Arrogance again. Should be that. <laughs> Don't be that way, okay? Yes, you're better, but you should not be arrogant. Uh, uh. So it's nice to be not as not as good, so that we're less arrogant. Okay, never mind. Okay, so people are arrogant because that's natural for us. You know, we're better. You know, the pale face people think they're better than yellow face, and yellow face people say, you too pale, you know, okay, uh, and so forth. So it's back and forth, that kind of arrogance. That's nothing. There's no talent for this guy. This guy selectively finds the people who are the most arrogant. That's why they're called arrogance banners. I, this is a banner about arrogance. I'm very arrogant. See if anyone can be more arrogant than me. So like, he chooses to deal with emperors, presidents, you know, senators, supreme judge, supreme court judges, and so forth. You know, he specialized in, in handling these super, super arrogant people. Does it make sense? That's why it's called banners of arrogance, meaning as far as arrogance goes, I'm, I'm the standard. I'm so advanced in arrogance that I have a banner that says I'm so arrogant here. Okay? So I'm known to be so arrogant. Okay? And so he specialized in handling the difficult cases because when you're arrogant, it's very difficult to help you. You don't listen. Okay? And so these super arrogant people, he chooses, he seeks them out. That's how he became enlightened. That's how he developed wisdom. It's how he became enlightened by seeking out these difficult cases. And then he found these arrogant, super, super arrogant people the standard of arrogance in any culture, okay? And he, 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 uh, uh, he uh, subdued them and helped them eradicate the arrogance by manifesting great compassion. How? Can you see the connection? No? He's seeing these arrogant people, arrogant people turn me off for, for, this, for this, this celestial king banner, splendid light here. Arrogant people, he sees them as suffering. He's not turned off by them at all. So he says, wow, these people, they are the standard of arrogance, okay? And I see them suffering, okay? So he used his compassion to help relieve their suffering, the suffering they experience from their arrogance. These are not, these are not usual kinds of you know, normal challenges that we face in our daily lives. Huh? He only goes for the gusto, you know, the worst of the worst. Because someone has to, because he can. Yeah? All those reasons. Yes, A. Uh, yes, Master. If transcendental compassion is not of this world, could you give us an example of what that would be? No, it's no such a thing as transcendental uh, compassion. It's all, all only compassion and great compassion. Uh, compassion is to feel others' pain. Great compassion is that you take others' pain as yours. That's the only difference. There's no such a thing as transcendental compassion. No, compassion is about feeling for others' pain and suffering. Okay? And then great compassion is that when you suffer, I also suffer. 
I can see your suffering, okay? And I make it my own suffering. So when I help you, I'm also helping my own suffering as well. Yes, nine. Master, Master. Um, sometimes I see people who are arrogant are causing suffering to other people as well. So when a Bodhisattva or Buddha are looking at a person who is extremely arrogant and causing so much suffering to other people, yes, would they still feel compassion for the person who is still <laughs> causing it? Right. It doesn't seem to make sense, right? I mean, these, these super arrogant people are causing a lot of problems to so many people. Okay, why should we help them? And this is why this guy requires, requires wisdom from this Mahasattva, celestial king, banner, splendid life. He sees a super arrogant person. He sees the suffering behind that super arrogance. We only see him as arrogant. This king here has wisdom. He says, you arrogant because of this. You see, we turn off by the marks. This guy is too arrogant. Look at his face. Look at his, he has a smirk on his, you know, on his, 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 his mouth. It's just so annoying. You know, he looks down upon you. Or they snicker. You know, you know, you know, why do you keep on wearing cheap cologne? You know, and so forth. How can you guys live like that? You know, so, it turns people like us off, okay? We're offended by that. But this king here, he is not offended by that. Of course, that super arrogant person looked down upon him as well, but he doesn't, he's not a turn off. He says, you know, I see why you're so arrogant, because you really are suffering. So he's not attached to the external marks, the manifestations. And so when he sees the other person, the guy, he's kind of suffering. That's why he said, oh, I see your friend suffering. So he finds a way to re 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 relieve, that, relieve the suffering so that the guy becomes not arrogant anymore. He fixes the arrogance. Yes, five. Uh, Master said, um now, like we could, you have to like grind it out to fix your arrogance or with chan and fasting. But this is a different time. Like this is the yes, first. this is a lower level. You were talking about yours, lower level. Yeah. He's is much higher level. He says, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's not turned off by arrogance. People, arrogant people, turn me off. Yes, sir, in the back. Six. Thank you, Master. And also, I think these arrogant people, they usually they have a lot of power on their hands. So by doing this, and then they change, it can also change the life of so many people as yes. well. For the yes, group. that's how they create blessings. By uh, these people, these erring people have a control over your lives, your livelihood, for example. They're very rich, they're very powerful. Okay, uh, so they uh, give you jobs, uh, give you money, and give you, you know, schools and, and, and uh, like uh, uh, Elon EVs. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so he's super arrogant, okay? Uh, he says, screw you, you don't want to advertise at my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, my social media thing here. Uh, you can take a hike or whatever, you know. <laughs> I don't care if I lose money. I make it somewhere in other ways, you know. Uh, so, and so that's what they do. Uh, and so, so they, but once they become not arrogant, they will then do a better job for us, for society. So they can have a huge uh, effects on the rest of us. So more, so many more. You fix that one person. Yes, four. 
네, 천황은 어, 대자비로 그런 교만한 사람들을 대하는데 저희 같은 중생은 어떻게 대해야 하는지 궁금합니다. So, Master, celestial kings using their great compassion to help others. So, people like us, the ordinary people, how can we help others with the compassion? Well, you help first by being, uh, being more compassionate to more people. That's how you start, okay? And when you have enough power, because it's tiring to be compassionate, they suck your blood. When you help them, they're going to ask for more and more and more and more. That's how, pe that's, that's how people are. Okay? And so you, you, you learn, you learn to become stronger and so that you can be, give more and be even stronger because they will ask for more and you become stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay? When you get to his level, after you become enlightened, then you have a lot more tools at your disposal. Okay? Yes, anyone else? You know, interesting, a different world, we, our world compared to their world, you know, they are into the big deals and we are, you know, we're struggling with our, I'm so hungry, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> okay, 387. Celestial King, realm of quiescence, gain a passage into liberation of subduing all hatred and malice among beings in the world. Okay, uh, 388, okay? Realm of quiescence. Realm of quiescence refer to his, the fact he is constantly in samadhi. Quiescence in Mahayana, uh, Ji Jing is refers to Ji Jing is to refers to you who are in samadhi. That's why your mind is so quiet. Okay, nothing bothers you. Okay, yeah. so that's why he resides, he abides in samadhi constantly. That's what he chooses to do to help others. Okay. Mm meaning he doesn't get excited, uh, he doesn't cry, yeah, and so forth, okay? Uh, and so now, after he became, come, became a celestial king in the, in the Six Desire Heaven, uh, he, he, he chose to manifest himself as constantly in Samadhi. Okay? Why? Because for heavenly king, remember, this is the realm of the heavenly demons. Get excited. They get very excited, excitable. And he says, no, I don't get excited, unlike you. Okay? Mm. And, and he became enlightened by subduing all hatred and malice among beings in the world. It's so much work in trying to subdue oh, the hatred or oh, the anger oh, and the malice. What's malice? Malice is harming mind. You're malicious because you intend to inflict harm upon others. Yes? Is my English okay? Sometimes I pretend to know Chinese and English and so forth. But don't be fooled. Feel free to correct me. Look it up, okay? Malice is that, because uh, I only, my reference is uh, American movies, <laughs> okay? Uh, he says some, some movies, a title like with no malice or something, absence of malice. <sighs> what is it with you guys? You are, you know, most boring people in the world. Yes, sir, in the back. Absence of malice. But it's so malicious, people. 
That's what they call themselves, absence of malice. Yes. Thank you, Master. Also in Spanish, in Colombia, malice, we call it malicia. Malicia. It's when, when people, they also always want to take advantage of every situation. Mm -hmm. No, it's not just take advantage. Mal malice here refers that you enjoy hurting and harming others. You intend to harm, not just take advantage. Taking advantage is nothing. That's commonplace. We all take advantage of each other. Okay? But malice is that you want to harm. You take pleasure of harming others. I do know some ex-disciples who are like that. <laughs> That's what we call them, ex-disciples. Yes, three. And they're not coming back. Uh, first of all, once you've proven yourself to be malicious, I discriminate against you. <laughs> yes, three. <clears throat> okay. First of all, I'd like to thank all the YouTube viewers for joining uh, for joining us online today. Amen. Please click like and subscribe. <laughs> and a question from uh, Jim. you have to be more persuasive and like. <laughs> Enthusiastic. <laughs> you were like, you so like, uh, like you forced to say it or something. <laughs> okay, work on that. <laughs> I have a question from Jim G. Is helping arrogant people meddling? Arrogant people don't usually ask for help. And that's precisely the point. They are so difficult, they reject you. And this guy figures out a way to get them, get to help them. It's, it's tremendous wisdom. It's so challenging. Yes, okay? And so malice is that, malice is that the heavenly demons are malicious. They are not sages. Yeah? Hey, Chase, what's happening, girl? <laughs> they're not sages. That's why they're malicious. They're the opposite of sages. They excel at hurting and harming others. Every day, they come up with new ways, more ways, and try to figure out better ways to hurt and harm you. I have an ex-disciple who's like that, okay? He's pretty sick. And, <laughs> but uh, uh, luckily, he has no powers. He has no, not very smart. So, but heavenly demons are extremely dangerous. Heavenly demons excel at being malicious. They harm you. That's the purpose in life, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, and so, I imagine this, this uh, celestial king here, when he was practicing, he specialized in dealing with heavenly demons, okay? Because they're the worst in terms of malice, okay? And if you cross the heavenly demons, they get very upset, okay? So that's why after he became enlightened, he said, okay, I better keep an eye on these people, okay? I've helped the parents, but now the children are coming up. So that's how I became a celestial king. That's my version of it, my interpretation. Does it make sense? They are extremely vicious, the beings up there. Yes, A. Um, Master, so considering that this, uh, uh, this is a heavenly king of the demon realm, um, does uh, beating these people into shape count as subduing, or that, the, that is not subduing at all? Well, uh, when you get there and you know what to do, we cannot, I cannot make conjectures on what, what to do to subdue the hatred and the malice. Okay? Well, it depends on your style. Sometimes you, you, uh, you do whatever it takes uh, in, the, in the realm of, uh, realm of expedience. So each one of them uses their own preferred methods, preferred uh, 
experience, skill and means. Okay? Mm. So it varies. We don't have to go into that kind of details. But he has, he has, see, so in order to unfold big wisdom, great wisdom, he, he took on the, the task of uh, very, very difficult tasks, if you will. All right? Anyone? You see, it kind of let you see how the world really functions. We only are so bothered by someone losing their temper, someone being mean and slander you. That's, you ain't seen nothing yet compared to these people. Heavenly demons are extremely, extremely difficult to handle to the point where you had to go up there to be with them, to keep an eye on them, to keep them in check. Otherwise, we'd be in big trouble. Yes, go for us. Amit of a master. Um, so this is related with a previous question. Um, so the blessings that we create if we ha do charity, are they the same that the ones that we create when we help in the temple, for example? No, they're not. Because when you help charity, it's for worldly uh, results. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so the difference is that when you help charity, uh, the effects of your charitable contribution will be X amount, for example. You help, you, you, you go to a soup kitchen, and you help the soup kitchen by, by I don't know, uh, cooking, by uh, washing or, or dispensing food, okay? And your help is limited to a certain number of people. That's the nature of charity work, okay? Your reach is limited, okay? Whereas when you go to a temple and you help a temple, uh, then the temple, let's say you give uh, some a donation to the temple, $5 to the temple, or something like that, and that money there is used. If the, uh, the people at the temple know better, okay, they would want to, be, want to be very careful with that money you give them, because their jobs is to make sure the money you give them, uh, that you put that money to great use, to benefit a lot of people more than they can do themselves by spending five bucks themselves. Otherwise, you fail your job as a left home person. Is that clear? If not, if you, if you take the five bucks and put it in your pocket and go buy some, uh, What's the comp competition of, uh, of, uh, of Starbucks now? Fields Coffee. There you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you take the money and spend it yourself, okay, then actually you are making it worse for the donor. The donor is better off giving it to a church, giving it to a soup kitchen, giving it to a food bank because it benefits more people than they were to benefit you and fill up your tummy. So therefore, you fail as a monk, as a nun too, okay? And therefore, you will pay the price because you are, 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 uh, 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 a, a, um, a parasite to Mahayana as a monk, as a nun. So we, have, we bear uh, severe, we, we, we are subject to severe consequences if we abuse your donation. On the other hand, if you, you take the, uh, your donation and use our skills to benefit a lot more than if you were if, if, you, if, if the church or charitable or organization is able to do it $5, then that justifies our existence. We're supposed to be a lot more beneficial for you. That's our role, okay? 
It's not about us being a nun, wearing this and talking Dharma and that, because as soon you receive a donation, okay, uh, you receive any money, a, 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 um, a meal, anything you receive, it has to be used to the maximum, to create the maximum benefits to the donor more than others. That's our responsibility. Okay? Otherwise, don't take donations. Because you do, and you only keep it for yourself. Then, in the future, you will have to become an animal to pay back that person. You have to slave for them. Is that dangerous for us monks and nuns? It's not a casual thing for us at all. Okay? Don't be fooled. It looks easy. You know, they come in, hey, it's a black a red envelope, please take it. Okay? Every time someone gives you a red envelope, you should say, I don't know what I'm going to do to earn this. Otherwise, you pay. Dearly for it. Okay, that's why a lot of monks and nuns who are not trained properly, they, they take the money and so forth, and they don't use properly. Eventually, the blessings run out, they have to return to lay life. Yes, three. YouTube question from Danielle Wisniewski. Is being annoyed, agitated, or frustrated an affliction? but prevent the anger from coming in? I don't understand the question. Is being, is How does being afflicted prevent the anger from coming in? I, I don't understand that. It's too abstract for me. Okay, clarify. Okay, so, so he's... He's, 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 a, he's a demon here. He's dealing with, with the worst kinds of people who has huge tempers and who are extremely malicious. He can handle them. You guys are babies in terms of, of anger, in terms of malice. Okay? Yeah. Next. Celestial King Banner embellished with wonderful wheels, gain a passage into liberation of being able by remember countless Buddhas of the Ten Directions to have them come to where he is. Hmm. Okay, uh, 390, commentary slide. Uh, his, uh, his banner um, embellished with wonderful wheels, meaning that when you talk about wheels in Mahayana, you're talking about speaking the Dharma, spreading the Dharma. Okay? So that in Buddhism, that's the symbol of Buddhism because it symbolizes the Buddha speaking Dharma. It's called turning a Dharma wheel. Okay? And so... Uh, so he, he's, uh, he's, he's very eloquent uh, in terms of speaking a Dharma. Okay, you, it's, so, it's so fascinating listening to him speaking a Dharma. Okay, and how did he become enlightened? He became enlightened um, by remembering, being mindful of countless Buddhas of the Ten Directions. Okay, meaning that he... Yeah. He has connection to countless Buddhas of ten directions, meaning that how do you have connection with ten, ten, you know, of countless Buddhas? By how? He has his spirit well connected. How do you do that? Would you like to know? Typical. You want to know only the hot shots. Yeah, how do you get the connection, build the connection here? Yes, sir, eight. I think he uh, made offerings and worked for those Buddhas. That's right, serving them. He served 
countless Buddhas of the Ten Directions. He served Shakyamuni Buddha, he served Amitabha Buddha, he served Medicine Master Buddha, he served uh, countless Buddhas. Yes, sir. And you know, it's not easy to serve countless Buddhas, let me tell you. Thank, thank you, Master. Um, I found that fascinating on the Vimalakirti Sutra, uh, when the Deva was speaking to Shariputra, and he was saying that in that room of the house of, of Vimalakirti, all living, all, all Buddhas from the Ten Directions were coming to teach the Dharma at that place. Yes. And that, that's something beautiful. Yeah, because he's a Buddha too. <laughs> so <laughs> they hang out together, you know? That's what Buddhas do too sometimes. They hang out and say, hey, hey, would you like to have some matcha tea? <laughs> okay, and after this, we go for some curry and uh, kimchi, you know, whatever, okay? And so, so, you, he has, the Buddha came to him because he served them. Okay, and, uh, and so, uh, so what's the advantage of having them, the Buddha come to him? A life fu. Hmm? Why? What's the advantage, you think? I have no idea. I'm, I'm guessing just like you. Trying to put yourself in his shoes. Why would you want a Buddha to come to you? How would Buddhas come to you, first of all? Hmm? Vicky, you know. You know one. Old Abbot, how would Buddhas come to you? Old oh, Abbot in, in uh, Jewel Mountain. He doesn't know. You should know. You should know already. Four, what's your guess? Um, Master, do they come with a retinue? Okay. How do you know the so. Buddha is there? How do you know the Buddha is there? How do you know the Buddha has come? Hmm. Yes, five. I'm Use your imagination. Fun. Come on, guys, let's have fun. How would you know? Huh? From a spiritual response. Spiritual responses, yeah, of course. Visions, yes. You see, I saw the Buddha. Buddha appeared in my dreams. Huh? I t I, I, oh, that's uh, the Buddha right there. Everyone bow to him. You know, money, they, 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 you, you can see them. Yes, five. Thank you, Master. I would know um, because I'm standing uh, at Way Mountain Temple at a 10,000 Relics uh, Budix Sharira exhibition. Thank you. That's a physical manifestation of the Buddha coming to us. You know, cool? It's a very manifestation right there. And even the old monk even forgot. He says, oh, it just appears. One more relic, I mean, the Buddha said, good job. Hmm? Work harder. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> Does it make sense? When the Buddha comes, can you afford to ignore the Buddha? And you think, hmm, tomorrow what shall I cook for the Buddha? He must have had a lot of good food. I need to come up with something else. Chang Chen, what do you think you're going to do for, for the Buddha tomorrow? See, you try your best. Okay.
You're on your toes when the Buddha has come to you. You served them before, so when they came, now you have to serve them better. Now they're here. <sighs> Celestial king, flower light, wisdom, gain a passage into liberation of universally manifesting the realization of proper enlightenment according to the thoughts of all living beings. Mm. Okay. 392, okay, uh, flower, light, wisdom, okay, the wisdom manifests itself as a light, light has a form of flowers, okay, uh, it's not just light, but it's the light, it's like a light show, you will, okay, uh, like a drone thing, okay, and he became enlightened by, uh, Everywhere, universally meaning that he goes everywhere, okay? Uh, everywhere meaning that think bigger. Don't think yourselves only Korea or United States or whatever, okay? It's you're talking about other worlds as well. This is the range that he has, okay? Uh, realization of proper enlightenment, meaning showing, uh, showing, uh, Showing enlightenment, phases of enlightenment, okay? Meaning that like the Buddha, he's born and then he, 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 uh, he uh, uh, grew up and meditated, grew, learned how to meditate. And then he uh, got married and he left the home life and he cultivated and then he became enlightened, turned the Dharma wheel and so forth. All those manifestations. Okay? According to the thoughts of all living beings. Okay? Uh, so, uh, he, that's what he does to those living beings uh, uh, by exhibiting uh, those manifestations himself. Okay? Uh, that's what he chooses to do to cross them over. Okay. 393, Celestial King Indra's wonderful brightness gain a passage into liberation of entering all worlds by means of great awesome strength and masterful methods. In Tolo Miao Guang Tian Wang, the Puru, Itia Shi Jian Da Wei Li, Zi Zai Fa Jie Tomen. Okay. So this Indra here, Indra is a very famous name. You should know it. In our world, Indra is, uh, means able celestial lord. Uh, he's a hot shot, and he has a lot of followers by the name like, uh, like uh, Daniel is his follower. You know? yeah. he, Daniel knows him as God, but we know him as Indra. See, this is our edge over the Catholics and the Christians. We know a lot more about their gods than they do. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and when in Daniel takes refuge, and then we teach him more. <laughs> I see he's laughing already. <laughs> okay, wonderful brightness. Okay, so the, the brightness makes you feel wonderful. Okay. It's just you're excited by this light, okay? He emits light and makes, it's just a wonderful light, okay? You just marvel at his light, his personal light, all right? Now, he became uh, enlightened by uh, going, entering, okay? Going to different worlds, not just a Sa world, okay? Uh, all the worlds. You can imagine the kind of spiritual power he has. He flies to all the worlds, okay? He enters all the worlds. I mean, he's there physically. So far, so good, okay? And, uh, and how does he do that? Uh, by means of... Uh, uh, Great, awesome power. So he manifests power. 
Okay? It's very powerful. The presence shows power. Okay? And, and uh, the uh, Dharma doors of self-mastery, not masterful methods, it's about he shows power, okay? Meaning that you, in his presence, you're in awe of his power. It's like, you know, when you see Arnold, for example, it's a humongous thing here of a man with all muscles. It shows strength, okay? So it shows, it shows power. But for this, this, uh, this celestial king here, Indra here, uh, Indra's wonderful brightness here, he, uh, when you're in his presence, you feel that his, he, he exudes power, great strength, okay? And, and, and you become, become in awe and very respectful and deferential to him. That's what, that's how he behaves. When you're in his presence, you become differential. And you're in awe of his strength. Okay? Uh, yeah, I don't think he needs to have muscles at all. Okay? He's just the presence. Inspire. Awe. And conveys great strength. Okay? His personal presence. Okay? And, uh, and he also, uh, another interesting thing here is to combine them together is you have to exhibit great strength and also at ease. Okay? So even though he's very powerful, but he's very relaxed. It's a very difficult thing to do. Think about it. When you want to be powerful, you have to go like this, right? When you show strength, you're like this. When you're like this, then you're not at ease. Yeah, cool. That's what he does to become enlightened. No? Don't try to understand. One day when, you, when you're sitting there and you about to become enlightened, you say, ah, I'm going to do this as well. That's why we, we're learning about all these styles of cultivation. And talking higher levels than ours. All right? And now the next section is then, then uh, now we go into the verses. Okay? So that will be next time. We pick it off 395. Okay? Any questions? Yes, sir, five. Master, so the whole time the Christian God is known as Indra? But the, the, the particular one that uh, Daniel worships, we know about him. But each world has its own interests. Ours in particular, the one that they worship, we know them. So Shakyamuni Buddha uh, explained to us about this particular one here. Okay? Anyone else? The world is a lot bigger, a lot more marvelous than you think. It's not what you think. It's the, 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 the marks, don't be attached to it. It's not, you know, you should not snicker and say, oh, he's a Christian God. I used to snicker though. Really? Well, actually, he's a Mahasattva. <laughs> they are so superior that they don't need your adoration, your respect, your offerings, huh? your service at all. That's why they, they're very powerful, because they don't need you anymore. Yes, one. Thank you, Master. Do celestial king run out of blessing? To, or the this celestial king self mastery here, for example, he's will never run out of blessings because he's very smart at his level. He always replenishes his blessings. He never runs out, never at their levels. 
Okay? But for us, for example, we run the risk of running our blessings if we don't replenish our blessings. So part of our learning process is to be cognizant of the fact that we using our blessings, what are we doing to replenish them? Okay? Nothing is free in life. All right? So that's why, that's why uh, people like Master Xunhua, the very, they, they don't, you know, they, they teach us, they teach, he taught his disciples uh, uh, be, be very, uh, st very uh, uh, stingy, uh, don't waste water, don't waste money, and so forth, because you need to preserve your blessings, okay? Mm. And that's how he taught them. So they're all very, very conscious about it. Okay? I'm teaching you not that. Okay? Because he taught it already. <laughs> I don't need to repeat it. Because some of my disciples are stingy already. I don't need to teach them to be stingy. Now I need to teach them the middle way where they should be wasteful. <laughs> because sting be because you are e economical is only one aspect of the cultivation, the starting point only. After a while, you need to learn to be wasteful because it creates more blessings than saving. <laughs> Does it make sense? No, Buddhism is, very, is widespread. It's not one way of doing it. Okay? That's why it's called a middle way. Yeah. Master Shenhua is, is, you know, the, the thrifty, economical, so forth. I'm teaching exact opposite, be wasteful so that you can help more people. Yes, go first. Amitofa Master, um, how does Buddhist um, explain the relation between Jesus Christ and, and Indra? I have no idea. Jesus Christ is supposed to be Indra's son. So they have a close relationship, I imagine, <laughs> like father and son. It turns out, you know, uh, in our world, in, in our style where we rule by Indra. So every month, okay, uh, I think, I believe mid-month of lunar month, lunar day, the 15th day of the lunar month, uh, Jesus, okay, will be sent. Okay, the crown prince will be sent from Indra's palace to the world, and he will go and do the rounds and, and, and take notes, okay? Uh, this lady here is not bad. She kills a few people, but she's uh, <laughs> saving a lot of people and so forth. So they have, they, they have a, a record of what's happening in our world. Okay? And so it's like when you have the big officials, the big shots coming, you on the 15th day of the lunar month, uh, the Asians are taught, the Buddhist Asians are taught to eat vegetarian, not eat meat, so that uh, you get uh, a, a day right there where you avoid creating offenses. Because if you uh, behave yourself on that day there, the crown prince will be very impressed. The son of God will be impressed. See, these the Catholics don't know that. That's why they keep on missing the boat. Okay? The chance to impress the son of God who goes back and says, you know, Daddy, you know, Daniel is pretty good. <laughs> but it turns out since Daniel misses his boat constantly, they come back, then you know, the, 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 the crown prince came back, comes back and says, you know, you know, Daddy, Daniel is such a bad boy. <laughs> but Apple is such a good girl <laughs> because Apple knows the tricks <laughs> and she eats she's vegetarian that day she refrains from cursing from smoking from drinking and so forth and the, the, the crown prince is so impressed and wow this is a good girl <laughs> got that and then the last day the 30th day of the lunar month, that's when God comes, Indra comes himself. 
He says, I better go check and look at Apple. <laughs> See if my son is right. <laughs> so that's why, that's why they have, we have that kind of connection with them. It's kind of cool. So this is why the Asians, they, they taught. You do that in, in, in Korea too, uh, Xianan. Uh, uh, in Korea, are, are you taught to also on the 15th day of the lunar month and 30th day of lunar month, you're supposed to, you know, uh, do special things to score points with our rulers? You don't, huh? See, the Chinese do that. The Asians do that. That's, that's uh, Asian wisdom. You score points. Okay? And... And when they're impressed by you, good things happen, you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, everyone. We stop here.